on here that I've, I've been quite a bit of time. It's not really a long tape, but going to that, and I know it is. Oh, have you listened to that one? I know I've skipped for the. Yes, I have. It's yes, I have. Yes. But uh, it's in very, very important. I looked at the notes of that today and I thought, dear Lord, I've been forgetting about that. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is how it is with life. We get busy. Mm -hmm. Right. Now, if, you're, if either side breaks down and you have a negative reaction to men and a negative reac reaction to women, uh, that you find that, you, you know, that you have your little inner child. Now, that's another thing, a little inner child. Every one of us here has a little inner child. Everybody has a little inner child. Now, if that little inner child is deeply hurt, you will find that little inner child within you sobs sometimes. Mm -hmm. I know because I have. That's right. And I praise God that I'm in the healed of that. Now, it all depends. Your your trunk and root of your life is your mother and father. You are extensions of your mother and father because that's the only way you knew how to live. And I ministered to a lady down at Tyab. And she said to me, she said, My mother said to me straight out, Jean, I never wanted you. And I was saying this in, in the, on a, giving a talk, and I was saying that this is one of the things we shouldn't say to our children. And she began to cry. She was set free. I'm going to tell you a bit, little about that later. But do you know what? She said to me, I'm doing the same with my child. I'm rejecting my girl. Because it was the only way she knew. Her mind was conditioned that way. See what I mean? The reaction, we do the things that our parents did. Now, the amount of love that we receive way down there in early childhood <coughs> is, uh, it determines our, the emotional state of our life, the amount of love we received, determines our emotional state or life. But thank God that God can make up that, uh, that love to us. Now, this is, I'll give you one example. When you have, if you have no father or a harsh father or a father that took no interest in you whatever, which so many people have, you find it very difficult for you may in your marriage because you have a male image that has been destructive to you emotionally. And you feel it hard to sort of, you wonder whether he's going to be like that, you know, and this sort of thing. And it also, you find that when you haven't had enough love, you'll find this, if you minister, you'll find this all the time, you've got to pick it up. If a person hasn't had that love that they should have had, the amount, and so many of us, it's everywhere. Because mm. our parents, in my vintage, I, I wonder where I, whether I ever heard the word love, and yet I had a good home. We didn't talk about love. It wasn't, it wasn't the in thing. Well, if you have been bereft of love from dad and mum, particularly fathers and daughters, that's the biggest hurt of all, you will find that you will need to be filled with God's agape love, a baptism of love, because you'll find the people you're uh, ministering to have nothing to give. That's a fact. They have nothing to give their husbands. They don't know how to love and they are bereft. They feel empty inside. Now, I remember up in Ballarat, you couldn't believe this, a woman came into the after meeting. We, had, we must have had 35 to 40 there. It was just amazing. And so many were in a heel. And I remember a woman sitting in the middle. I know the woman. And she called out, can't somebody make my mother love me? And that's true. Mm -hmm. Desperate at 55 for mother's love. And she lived like that. Bereft feeling. She just want, she wanted some mother love. Of course, I mean, she was triggered off by the fact that we'd been preaching on inner healing. But I thought that was sad. A girl I know went to school, came home, her father was dead. I said, you, they took her aside, beautiful family. Your father died while you were at school. Her reaction, she married, always felt men left you. She couldn't understand that. She's about 10. 
No, no, Ted, she said, men leave you, men leave you. Uh, and then she married, and she's set free through our ministry. Praise God for that. She set free. If her husband had to go up to the corner to get a bottle of milk, she, she, he had to kiss her before she went because she had that feeling, what if he leaves me? Or what if something happens to Gerard or Bill or whatever you name, whatever you like, I'm not saying the name. What if something happens? See, the reaction. A, that is a negative male image. They just feel that parents uh, vanish. Now I want to say something about words are powerful. Now this is something that you have to know about because in the main these days, I'm ministering. I know that I'm giving you more than is on there. As a matter of fact, I've got to really go through. I, I only knew about this two days ago. Liz rang up. But I want to tell you this. You're going to minister a lot by words. Now, I want you to, I want you to see this. Now, I'm ministering more through words than any other way. And, and you know, when Liz said to me, you know, teach, they want to know how to minister. Well, all I can say is, Put your hand on the head and speak God's word, and I can go home now. <laughs> because that's how it's getting. That's how it's yeah. getting. But the, the, don't think you, that's all you have to because the more you know, the deeper will be your ministry. The greater knowledge that you have, the deeper will be your ministry. I think Janet would know that in the church that she's been in, that, that, that she'd be told that, mm. that more knowledge. It, it, whatever your gift calling or talent is, get in, stuck into it, even if it's making a cup of tea or being hospitable or caring for little children or old, old women and care what it is, learn about it. It's important. Now, words. Now, you've got to realise this. Somebody said to that girl, that woman, I never wanted you anyway. Now, that went on implanted itself, an imprint on her subconscious mind. I, I should have asked you where that imprint was. I hope mm. everybody said, that's on my subconscious mind. You've got to get that in, because I tell you, this is one thing. Every time some people think of a negative, they said it was the devil told them. Now listen, if you give the devil as much power in your life as that, I'll, I say, God help you because you, he craves attention, he craves for you to say things like that, and it's not the devil. Sometimes he, we know that he, we have to cast down even evil imaginations and bring everything into the obedience of Christ. We know sometimes these things do come to us, but that is something being triggered off in your subconscious mind. Now, that woman... I never wanted you anyway. That's triggered off. The minute I said to her, you shouldn't say, now this is one thing we should watch, I never wanted you. That triggered off that hurt in her subconscious mind. And I, I don't think she was, I mean, true enough in the healing brings deliverance. I'm so thankful for that. Hallelujah. Mm. And But you know, we've never had anyone out of all the thousands that have said to us, was I delivered from an evil spirit? Isn't that strange? And yet, you know, some of them have great, what you call, demonstration. It, I just thought of that today. Isn't that amazing, you know? And we know, but we never, we don't say anything. But we just say, well, they're healed. Why? They're healed. So why? What we do is we take Jesus to people. And when you take Jesus to people, mm -hmm. he's got to flee. Isn't that right? Amen. You can't. He can't live in darkness. And when you speak His name, and you speak in tongues, and or just speak the word to the people that you that you are setting free. Now the word of God is is powerful, and you've got to learn how to use that. But on the other side, negatives mm -hmm. are desperately, desperately, des desperately devastating. And you've got to watch that. I'm not saying that you will speak them. But you've got to learn this. Ultimately, the words that you and I speak will mould our life, control our life, rule our life. And we've got to realise and we've got to come into that. I believe I've made a start. I've got a secret in my heart. And I am, be I am beginning to get my life into line every moment of the day that I can think of into line with this word. Mm. And I heard of a pastor the other day for one whole day. 
He never quoted or let out of his mouth another word other than what's in this book. He just, when he was asked anything, he gave a reply out of the word. Now that's tremendous. And when we are ruled by the word of God, and our subconscious mind is ruled by God's word and not these negatives, and the way to get rid of that, it's inner healing, not always. It's the Word of God. And when your subconscious mind grips the Word of God, and you don't say anymore, oh, I can't do it, cook your own tea. <laughs> not as bad as that, is it? I can't do it. When your subconscious mind registers in the place of that negative, I can do all things through Christ Jesus, which strengthens me. You don't think about the negatives anymore. You are controlled and ruled by the Word of God. And there's going to be women and men who walk this earth, and it's coming soon, but it's not going to come without work. Let me tell you that. It's the working of getting God's Word into you until it rules you, saying it over and over and over and over again, and listening to tapes such as Kenneth Copeland and people like that who are got this positive message, who, who speak out, you know, with such vehemence. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. I, you know, I, that gripped me for 10 days and I lived in that. Somehow or other it just seemed to float away one day. Now that's a bad, I'm, you know, I'm, tr I'm only saying that because I don't want you to think I'm, I'm there because I'm not. But this is it. When we live like that, I'll tell you, we're going to walk round this earth at a power that nobody, no evil spirit, nothing will be able to come or stand against us. We will be fortified and made strong and able to stand up to anything. And it's got to be soon because this Australia needs us. Australia needs us set free from our and in a heel and then... Uh, and, and fortified in the Word of God. And I'm just so full of it. Janet, go for it. I tell you, I'm that just so full of this. And it's, 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 I don't care. I've got to the stage where I just don't care about anything else. I'll tell you, that's, that's how I feel at the moment. That, the, that it's, it's a tremendous life that we're going to come into in Jesus Christ. And, uh, you know, we're going to, well, it's just going to be, now just let me say that. <laughs> right, now I want to tell you about this, um, what you, uh, the most powerful tool in the whole of our body is our tongue. It is used for good and used for evil and is our tongue and the word of God. That's the most valuable asset we have when we can use our tongue speaking the word of God. Now I want to tell you about, uh, <laughs> this is a bit funny, this. You can use the words and you can look up at home, um, Proverbs 21, Liz, 15, I think. Uh, I, I did have it written down. The, this it's power as a, in the oh, life. 18, Death and life in the power of the tongue. 1821. 1821 Proverbs. Right, now you can look that up. And it's true, you can kill with the tongue and you can cure with, it, with the tongue or you can bless people with your tongue. Now, down at one of our assemblies, there's a girl. Now, here's the power of the tongue. There's a girl down there, and I know that she's needed in the healing for a long time, but you can't go up to someone and say, this you need in the healing. No, you know, you can't do that. And I've seen this, you know, on this girl, and I've said, and I haven't said anything. I went back to that assembly about last year in October, and I saw that shining face, and I knew there was release there. And she said, Jean, you wouldn't read what's happened to me. Now, this is a clever girl. She ministers to te her teenagers. She's in love with her husband and supplies and satisfies his every need. She can lead women's meetings, she can speak. She, by the, she's a pastor's wife. But she said to me, you know what my problem was? I went before the Lord. I said, God, you've got to set me free. I can't mm. stand anymore. What is it? She, she, God said, ten words were spoken to you at 12 years old that have 
have taken control of your life. Ten, she didn't tell me what they were, didn't tell me who spoke most, didn't want to know. Ten words. It could be you'll never amount to anything. That's a very one that's about a lot. And she said, I got down and I said, God, heal me. Took Jesus into that situation, saturated herself with that, and she was completely healed. And do you know, she said, for 20 years, I think she said, I have been controlled by those words. 20 years in, I've been controlled. In, my life has been controlled by those words, and they're gone. And amazing mm. as people all over the place that need ministry. And now here, on, when we were down at Hastings, a girl came out, a girl, a girl been in and out of mental homes, terribly sad. I, we just couldn't spend the time that she needed. She came out, and I started to minister the Word of God to Ephesians 1, 4. Mm. This is what you have to do to people. Buddy. You've got to know those scriptures, chosen before the foundation of the world. You've got to say, you know, he thought about you thousands of years before he created one thing, and quote that scripture again. And I, this time I thought, and I read in one of Shula's books that I'm God's idea. That's how we're on this earth. We're God's idea. I like that. We're God's idea. I, I preached that down at morning and the women thought it was great and they, they got releases in that uh, developing a positive self-image thing. And she, she, I said, you're God's idea. And I've got my, you're God's idea. That's how you hear, Jenny. And she's not through by any means, but she said, you know the blessing of the day? When you said, I'm God's idea, that really did something to my subconscious mind. So there you are. You see, this is how you can bless people like that. But that's what you've got to keep up. You've got to, con what you confess, you will possess. Now, it's quarter to nine, Liz. Yep. Now, there's just oodles of stuff. <laughs> oh, once, once upon a time, when Leo Harris and my husband started the CRC, everybody, like Leo Harris, was very formal. Carry a Bible in like this under the. Rob used to carry it the same way for years. I knew it was the Harris, yeah. isn't that right? The Harris hold. And uh, you know, you walk into the meeting like that. And, very, and my husband the same. One word out of place with, you know, that does to give talks. I would thought, oh, I'll do this. This is wrong and that's wrong. Oh, that's terrible. And well, Tom would say something about it. He didn't, but you know. But when we were down at Merrick's, Oh, he does tell me things. He said, I don't look up the scripture enough. Now, here's the thing. Because you think, now, the marriage seminar, well, we did that down at uh, Hastings last week, or the week before. And, you know, there's so much in it. And I, I just, I, I, but he said to me, listen, you remember this. He said, it's not you that, that sets people free and it, or brings the blessing and people get blessed. It's the word of God. You get stuck into opening up more. I couldn't read it all, but... I'd be just out looking at the Word all the time, there's so much in it, but remember, it's the Word of God that does the Word, you know, and that's important mm. to know that, and get people to read it and, you know, uh, speak it out. And I think it was before you came down at Victoria, and he, he, he had a word of knowledge, actually, actually it was for my husband and me, and he said, stand up, and he gave us this word of knowledge. And that's nothing to do with what I'm going to talk about. <laughs> it happened to be then. And all of us says, now what am I going to preach on? <laughs> all his papers, he went through like that. His notes. He said, I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do. And I thought, praise God for you, Phil. Mm. I'm living in the days of Phil Pringle, that was Phil Pringle. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just try to, I'm just myself and that's all there is to it, no more formality. Even Tom's letting up a bit. <laughs> now, God. How did it happen? Now these, why did it happen? How, how is it that it happened? Put it that way. Now, first of all, lots of us, we were a long time without the Lord. We were living separated from God in a sinful world, and let's face it, we were children of the devil, right? So anything happened, could happen to us. We were not conscious of his power or his presence. Then, number two, evil came into the world by choice. Now, you know, I've often thought, why did God let Eve eat that fruit? You see, he could have snatched that fruit out of her hand and said, you're not going to eat that? 
that's forbidden fruit. But you see, Eve, just like us, has a free choice. We have a free will. You and I can do anything. And the responsibility for you and me is to map out our destiny. We map out our destiny. We do it. You say, oh, God speaks to me. Yeah, but do you do what God tells you? I mean, we are so often... God told me this, but we don't always do it. We have a choice, that's why. It, it is, we're not robots. God doesn't want us that, that way. Now, God only changes our lives as we permit him to change them. Now, take this for an instance. A man rapes a woman. So God doesn't just stand there and, and stop it. That it could be a baptized in the spirit woman. That man has free will. He decides he's going to rape that woman. That's it. That's how things happen. We have a free will. And never always remember that Satan can't come into any areas of your life without your consent. We open ourselves sometimes to him, but it's because... He can't come into our area unless we allow him to come. He, we are, I don't want to get into this here, but we are Satan's masters. He can't, he's not around to push us about. We are him to, we are here to push him and tell him where to go. And our confession should be, I am a master of the powers of darkness. I am a master of Satan. I am a conqueror. Romans 5.17, write it down. Get it into you when you get home. says that you live like a king in the realm of life. Number three, mm -hmm. self-inflicted wounds. Called, it's called that way in the army, self-inflicted wounds. You get into trouble and you, it's your own fault you did it. Now... They bring much trouble on us, self-inflicted wounds. One glaring one is when a girl marries a man who is unsaved or vice versa. That's a self-inflicted wound. If you do it, and no doubt somebody would tell you, I've got relatives like that, that have done that. And you bring awful trouble on yourself because the Bible says don't be unequally yoked. Now, oftentimes, we know, we're not talking about when you get saved, after you're married, but to marry an unequally yoked person, well, I know this in the ministry for all the years I've been, you bring destruction and devastation on your life. That is what we mean by self-inflicted wounds. Four, God never puts evil on us. We've got to get that straight. Now, Oral Roberts brought a lot of wonderful things to the world that... My husband and I will never forget. But and it's a lot of years now. But he preached this. God is a good God. There's only good in God. There's nothing but God. God, good. God is love. Love is God. There's, we can't take it in. Our human mind, the way we think, it's very difficult to take it in. But he, is, he can't do anything else but love. And the devil is a bad devil and all he does is destroy, wants to destroy and all the rest with us. That's his mission, destruction, lies, fraud, you name it. And God is nothing but good. He, he is a good God, and he, but he sometimes, he never puts evil on you, he can't. But sometimes he allows us to suffer. And he allows us to go through things that are not pre very uh, pleasant for us. But don't forget, Jesus had a hard time too, didn't he? Mm -hmm. A very hard time on this earth. And he did it for us. Now, if, if, if God allows a thing for us, it's for our good. I'll tell you that in a moment. You know that. Oh, that's it. Whatever happens to us in the... Whatever happens... It works for our good. Always, finally works for our good. We may not see it, but God is working out something good for us. Be assured that God is good. Now, I'll give you those scriptures for the uh, Romans 8, 28 in a minute. 
Now, Christians do foolish things, and we suffer for it. You wouldn't believe this. I met a beautiful woman over in Adelaide uh, that went to, actually, to a, a paradise. And she came out last minute in the healing. Can you do anything for me, Jen? I'm living in torment. Absolute torment. I've had an abortion. I can't sleep. I, I'm frightened to go to sleep because I wake up in torment. Was it a boy? Was it a girl? I'm telling you these things. Abortion is, the end result is torment. We need to tell people that. Torment. And I didn't have, the lights were getting switched off and away, and I, my husband says, come on, love. So I put my hand on the head, and I couldn't tell you what I said. And I prayed for that woman for years. And all of a sudden, she turned up at our around. I've been looking for you everywhere, Jean. She said, do you remember the abortion lady in Adelaide? I did, sure. You bet I did. I said, yes, I do. You don't need to tell me a story. I remember she, her husband died. She had four teenagers. She fell in love with a man. She began to have his baby, and she decided to have an abortion. She could never marry him. And here she was with her new husband telling me all this. It was, it was really lovely in a way that the, the tea was in this thing too. So she said, uh, and that was her story, and she said, I'm still in love with that man even now, although I'm married to my husband, I'm still in love with him. Well, she said, I want to tell you something. Twelve, before twelve o'clock struck that night, I went home as miserable as can be and still in the torment, but before twelve o'clock, everything, every reaction to that abortion just lifted off me like that. And she said, he even took away that love that was wrong mm. for that man. Mm. And she said, I'm standing before you, Gina, peaceful, happy, fulfilled woman in Jesus Christ. Now she, you'll be shocked, was baptized in the Holy Spirit. And yet she had that affair with that man and she became pregnant and had an abortion. You see, we do, we do foolish things. But you know, when every time I think of Chris, I think, oh dear God, your love. Your love and forgiveness. Isn't he a wonderful daddy God? Bring her into peace and a fulfilled woman. I love that testimony. Now, no matter what happens, God is still, still in control with our life. Isn't that good stuff? He's still in control, controlling us. No matter what hurts, traumas, rejections, or tragedies we go through in life, we still move into Romans 8.28, which says, All things work together for good, for those that love the Lord. 1 Thessalonians 5.18, In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God concerning you in Christ Jesus. You need to know these scriptures like, you know, the back of your hand in Ephesians 5.20. And I, uh, on Shuler's program, not it's been on twice, there was a man, a champion baseballer, whose wife and three children were killed on an ice slippery road. He was saved, his, all his family went. And he was a Christian, and he said that, that uh, he, he cut, and he said, you know, he said to Robert Shuler, you know, he said, to me, that was tragedy, a human tragedy. But he said, I began to praise the Lord. And he said, I knew, and I think this is so beautiful, I knew that up there in the heavenlies, my God was working out something good. Mm -hmm. And he's married again, has another family, and now he's a pastor. So that's great, isn't it? You must not allow yourself ever to live in buts, ifs, and whys. I'll tell you this. I, I could tell you stories, but I'll tell you if you say, but this happened to me, if it had been this way, and why did it happen to me? I want to tell you something, girls. It will destroy you eventually. I could tell you stories. You've got to turn round and you have to quote Romans 8, 28, God, and you also have to get into your head that God has a wonderful plan and purpose for your life, and he is working out everything for your good. No matter what happens, yet the Bible says it's for your good. It might be good for you, but he's working out something that will that, that is good. Mm -hmm.
Now that sounds, I don't know whether I got that round, I got that out of Dairy and Cooper's book. I don't know whether I got that really round 